Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial where we will describe how to do transcription and translation problems. In particular, problems where we start with the sequence of a coding strand, and we're asked to imagine that the strand opposite the coding strand, the template strand, was transcribed to produce mRNA, and the resulting mRNA was translated to produce a peptide. And as our answer, we need to give the sequence of the resulting peptide. We have some simplifying assumptions, and one of those assumptions is we're not going to require a start codon. It's, it's a highly uh, stripped down problem just to try to convey the, the big picture. We, we would like you to be able to go from the sequence of either the coding strand, if that's what we start with, or from the sequence of the template strand, if, if, if some problems will, will start with that. And at the end of the problem, we want you to be able to report the proper peptide sequence using the one-letter code of amino acids. So we're going to imagine that we're told that we have this sequence, G, T, C, A, G, A, and that this is the sequence of the coding strand. So we're going to write coding to remind ourselves of that fact, and while we're at it, we're going to assume a 5 prime to 3 prime orientation. And that's a safe assumption because that's a convention that if you're just given the, se the single sequence of DNA and you're not told otherwise, you should assume that the sequence runs 5 prime to 3 prime left to right. So we want to imagine that the strand opposite that, opposite this coding strand, which would be the template strand, we want to imagine that this template strand, which is going to run 3 prime to 5 prime because it's anti-parallel, we want to imagine that this template strand is going to be transcribed. So we first of all have to write what the sequence of the template strand is, and that's fairly straightforward because the, the bases that we're going to show are going to be complementary to the bases in the coding strand. So starting at the right, opposite the A, we would have a T. And please note that this is a T and not a U because we're still talking about DNA. Opposite the G, a C. The A, a T. The C, a G. The T, an A. And the G, a C. So the sequence of our template strand would be as shown, and now we have to imagine that this template is going to be transcribed to produce an mRNA. Now, obviously, this happens with RNA polymerase, and RNA polymerase catalyzes the, the unwinding and, and the, the synthesis of the mRNA. Um, so we're, we're, we're skipping a lot of the, the steps because we want to focus on the big picture. So we're going to think about what sequence of mRNA would result. And we want to um, at least write this in a manner that reflects the direction of mRNA synthesis, which would be 5 prime to 3 prime. And the reason uh, that mRNA and DNA, for that matter, are synthesized 5 prime to 3 prime have to do with adding uh, or bringing in either um, NTPs or DNTPs and having the addition, having those add to the 3' prime hydroxyl of our growing strand. So the template is going to be read 3' prime to 5' prime so that synthesis can, can proceed as it must, 5' prime to 3'. Prime. So opposite the C in our template, we would have a G. Opposite the A, a U. Now I'm putting an, a, a U because now we're talking about RNA. So instead of a, a thymine, we're going to have a uracil. Opposite the G, a C. Opposite the T, an A. Opposite the C, a G. And then opposite the T, another A. So that would be the sequence running left to right, 5 prime to 3 prime of our mRNA. Now what I want to do is draw your attention to something you've probably already keyed in on, and that is the fact that the sequence of our coding strand and the sequence of our mRNA are essentially identical. The only exception is that where there's a T 
in the coding strand, we see a corresponding U in the mRNA. So in the next screen, we're going to rewrite the sequence of our, our newly synthesized mRNA, and we're going to imagine that that gets translated to produce a peptide. Continuing on, I have rewritten the sequence of our mRNA that we determined on the previous screen. So now what we want to do is imagine that this mRNA is going to be translated. Now translation, as you know, occurs on ribosomes, but the direction of translation is 5' prime to 3'. Prime. So we're just going to imagine that this mRNA is, is, is going to be translated to produce a peptide. So reading 5' prime to 3', prime, left to right, the first codon we encounter is GUC. So I'm just going to put a dotted line to, to separate the two codons. And GUC encodes the amino acid valine. And the one-letter code for valine is capital V. The next codon is AGA, and that encodes the amino acid arginine. And the one-letter code for arginine is VR. So the answer that we would report is simply capital V, capital R. Capital V for the valine, capital R for the arginine. And that is how you do transcription and translation problems where we start with the coding strand.